Hi everyone, Juan Finance here. And in this video, we're going to cover the BSA Boardlet and the simple math behind every buy and sell. So first, let's have the definition of Boardlet. It's actually the minimum number of shares one can buy or sell. And it also shows the minimum fluctuation of price for a stock. So here we have the standard Boardlet of the PSE. This one is coming from BPA trade, but it's actually constant across all brokers. So you have the column for currency, you have the minimum price, you have the maximum price fluctuation and Boardlet. So let's try to apply the Boardlet in a buy transaction. So what if you wanted to buy um, Ariad and the prevailing price is 25.90. So here, if you're going to look at the Boardlet, the price range of 25.90 is here. So the minimum price of 20 and the maximum price of 49.95. So therefore, you are required to buy at least 100 shares. And the fluctuation of price okay, is by you know divisibility of 0 0.05. So if the prevailing price is 25.90, the next uh, bid price or the lower price is 25.85. So that's off by 0 0.05. And the next uh, ask price or the next higher price of 25.90 is 25.95. So if you are going to buy 100 shares, that's around 2,590. So here we have the uh, bid ask uh, of ARIT in details. Now, if you're going to look at the 25.90, now usually the uh, now here the bid price is actually the buyer's price and the ask price is actually the seller's price. Now, usually buyers would like to buy, you know, a security lower than the prevailing market price. So if it's selling at 25.90, buyers would like to buy at a discount. So here we have 25.85 and 25.80 down below here. And usually sellers would like to buy the security higher than the prevailing price. So if you're going to look at here, we have from 25.90, now it's up 25.95, 26, 26.05, and so on. Okay, so that's how you look at the bid and the ask price, and of course, relative to the minimum number of shares here. So what if you buy 100 shares? So that's the minimum. So if you're going to look at, if you plug an order to your platform, you have your buy and then the security name, you read, Quantity that's 100 shares. The price is what? What if you wanted to buy at 25.85? So here the the gross value is 2,585, and here comes the charges here. Okay, so your total value now from 2,585 now is at 2,607. So instead of having a cost, you know, per share of 25.85, the adjusted, you know, average share or average cost per share is now 26.08. So that's 2,607.79 divided by 100 shares that you bought. So the average cost is 26.08. Now let's try to buy, let's say, above the minimum boardlet. So this time it's around 700 shares. So the total value is 18,095 and your total charges now is 53. And the total value is 18,148. So if you're going to look at the adjusted now, it's 25.92. Now, if you're going to compare this one a while ago, if, if you bought 100 shares, the average cost is actually set at 26 pesos. But this time, since you bought higher than the minimum number of shares required, the average cost is now lower. That's 25. Now, it's because of this. So you have here the commission is 0 0.25 and the gross value or a minimum commission of 20 so, so meaning if you buy below 8,000, which is um, the example a while ago at 2,000, you will still have a minimum commission fee of 20 pesos. So in order to exhaust this, okay, if you're going to look at the reverse computation, you should trade at least 8,000 to fully exhaust the 20 pesos commission fee. Okay, so the entire statement would apply. So that's 0.25% on the gross value, this one or the minimum commission of 20 pesos. So the rest of the computations are presented here. You have the commission, uh, the value added tax, you have the PSE fee, uh, SCCP fee, and you have 1.81. So you sum all of these charges and fees, you will come up with your 
total charges of 53 pesos. Okay, so what if you buy, now this, this time is below the minimum, that's 90. So if you're going to look at here, if you plug the order, now the system would actually prompt that your order is not sent because it's an invalid quantity. Now simply because it's you are in a normal order. So you have to shift to the odd lot, okay? So this time orders are, you know, uh, below the, the minimum so you can actually trade them. Uh, in the adlet uh, section, okay. So the iceberg uh, refers to the, let's say, uh, institutional buyers and sellers or uh, institutional transactions, okay. So you have here huge volumes in in iceberg. But if you're going to let's say buy or sell in fractions, okay, what I mean is that uh, you know not not exactly within the boardlet, you can um, go to the adlet and then. Uh, yeah, uh, search for the specific security there, buy, or if you want to sell. So let's jump to sell transaction. Now here you're looking at the same set of fees and charges, but this time you have additional uh, item here. You have a sales tax, which is a 0.60 of the gross value. So here, if you're going to look at what if you bought a read 700 shares and then the price was uh, 25.92 and then you wanted to sell at uh, 27 so here if you're going to look at um, the gross profit actually is 756 so that's uh, 18,900 minus 18,144 and then if you're going to convert that one into a percentage or let's say ROI that's actually 4.16 percent that's the gross uh, revenue or profit that you had but if you're going to look at here because of the total charges that's uh, coming from 4.16, it's now 2.93%. Okay, so it's simply because of the charges. So you sum all of these charges here and fees, and then you will come up with your total charges of 169.15. So you have now 2.93% um, or net profit of 533. So that's all for this video thank you very much for watching and i hope that you learned something please do like the video and if you want others to understand kindly share this video and if you need to know more kindly subscribe so you won't miss any future videos that we're going to make thanks for dropping by